let us now look at example number 8 the question says if secant theta plus tan theta equals to 2 plus root 5 then sin theta plus cos theta equals to what and the answer options are 3 by root 5 root 5 7 by root 5 and 1 by root 5 now we have already solved such type of questions where one equation in terms of theta is given and we are required to find out some expression which also involves theta how do we answer such questions there are two ways either go with random substitution of theta and we generally substitute 0 30 45 60 and 90 degrees to find out what theta is that is possible only if it is balanced on both the sides otherwise we can follow the regular method where we use different trigonometric and algebraic formulae to find out the value of theta now what do we do in this case here if you look at the right hand side of the expression we have 2 plus root 5 right on the right hand side of the equation the value given is 2 plus root 5 and if we try with the known values of theta see we have learned trigonometric ratios for some specific angles that is 0 degrees 30 degrees 45 60 and 90 degrees we would very well know that we never get root 5 for any trigonometric function or any trigonometric ratio at 0 30 45 60 90 we don't get root 5 as either numerator or denominator but on the right hand side here we have got root 5 so clearly trying with those random substitution may make the procedure lengthy right we may end up wasting a lot of time so avoid doing that and if you have to follow some other method then the only choice we have is the regular method where we use different trigonometric and algebraic formulae so let's follow the traditional method and see what theta is now in this case secant theta plus tan theta is given we know an identity in terms of secant theta and tan theta what is that secant square theta minus tan square theta equals to 1 if secant square theta minus tan square theta equals to 1 we can say secant theta plus tan theta into secant theta minus tan theta equals to 1 yes or no a plus b into a minus b is a square minus b square so secant square theta minus tan square theta equals to 1 we already know what secant theta plus tan theta is 2 plus root 5 so we'll substitute here what do we get secant theta minus tan theta into 2 plus root 5 equals to 1 from which we can say secant theta minus tan theta equals to 1 by 2 plus root 5 again we can rationalize this to make it simple what do we do uh, multiply and divide by 2 minus root 5 2 minus root 5 so what do we have here in the numerator we'll have 2 minus root 5 the denominator will be 4 minus 5 right this is again in the form of a plus b into a minus b so a square minus b square so 2 square 4 root 5 square 5 so 4 minus 5 minus 1 so 2 minus root 5 by minus 1 so this can be taken as root 5 minus 2 all right secant theta minus tan theta is root 5 minus 2 and we know secant theta plus tan theta equals to root 5 plus 2 all right this is root 5 minus 2 that is 2 plus root 5 or root 5 plus 2 now if you observe two equations secant theta minus tan theta root 5 minus 2 secant theta plus tan theta root 5 plus 2 this is like two equations with two variables what is the first variable secant theta the second one tan theta so i'm sure when we solve these two equations we get what secant theta and tan theta are right instead we can directly say that secant theta is root 5 you look at this secant theta root 5 tan theta 2 so secant theta minus tan theta root 5 minus 2 and secant theta tan plus tan theta root 5 plus 2 right so we can come to a conclusion that secant theta equals to root 5 and tan theta equals to 2 next secant theta is root 5 our requirement is sin theta and cos theta so by using these two trigonometric ratios we have to somehow get sin theta and cos theta right so we are not trying to find out what theta exactly is. we are instead trying to find out what is sin theta and cos theta directly so secant theta is root 5 i can say cos theta equals to 1 upon root 5 because cos theta is 1 by secant theta now how do we get sin theta here see we know what is tan theta and cos theta can we get sin theta from this yes because tan theta is equal to sin theta by cos theta so this implies sin theta by cos theta equals to 2 so from this we can say sin theta equals to 2 into cos theta what is cos theta 1 by root 5 so 2 into 1 by root 5 will give us 2 by root 5 so we know cos theta is 1 by root 5 and sin theta is 2 by root 5 what is required sum of those two values and just do that so 2 by root 5 plus 1 by root 5 which is equal to 
3 by root 5. Right? So our answer has to be option A, 3 by root 5. However, you can cut down a few steps here. You need not write all these steps to get the final answer there. So the point here is since we are not able to get the value of theta directly, we have to go for a regular solution. And even in the regular method, we are not trying to calculate what theta exactly is. We are not worried about the angle theta. We are instead trying to work on sine theta and cos theta directly. Alright? So that's how we can get the answer here. But if you are really quick and smart in your calculations, you can cut down a few more steps from this procedure, from this process of arriving at the required answer. What can be done? See, let us go by the idea of a right angle triangle like we have done in the earlier example. right? Let's consider a right angle triangle. We know that all these trigonometric ratios are obtained from a right angle triangle. These are ratios of different sides of a triangle. We have secant theta plus tan theta equals to 2 plus root 5. Now, you know, it's like if you if you if you know Pythagoras theorem, there are triplets required. Pythagoras theorem means what? A hypotenuse square should be equal to base square plus perpendicular square. Alright? So this is like A, B, and C. So A, B, C are like triplets. There are certain triplets which satisfy the Pythagoras theorem. What is Pythagoras theorem? A square plus B square equals to C square. Alright. Now, one of those triplets is 1, 2 and root 5. Right. For example, if, if you have to consider a very basic example of Pythagoras theorem, basic uh, values which satisfy Pythagoras theorem, we can say this is 3, this is 4 and this is 5. Yes or no? 3 square plus 4 square equals to 5 square. So these are known as triplets. 3, 4, 5 is one triplet. Likewise, 1, 2 and root 5 is another triplet. If you say this is 1, this is 2 and this is root 5. So let's take this as 1, this is 2 and root 5. What happens? 1 square plus 2 square is 1 plus 4, 5 and root 5 square 5. So a square plus b square equals to c square, right? This is one of the triplets. So we can say this angle is theta here. Now, if you try to, you know, look at the given uh, equation, secant theta plus tan theta equals to 2 plus root 5. What is secant theta from this one? Look at the triangle, secant theta. Secant theta we all know is hypotenuse by adjacent. So root 5 by 1, root 5. And what is tan theta? Tan theta is opposite by adjacent, perpendicular by adjacent. So 2 by 1, 2 by 1 is 2. Now observe secant theta plus tan theta equals to root 5 plus 2. Secant theta plus tan theta equals to root 5 plus 2. Which means the triplet 1, 2 and root 5 satisfies the given equation. Now we can directly find out what is sin theta and cos theta and arrive at the required answer. We need not follow all this procedure here. What can we say? Sin theta. What is sin theta from this right angle triangle? Opposite by hypotenuse. So 2 by root 5. And how about cos theta? Cos theta is adjacent by hypotenuse. 1 by root 5. See we have got the same values even in this case. Sin theta is 2 by root 5 and cos theta is 1 by root 5. So we can say sin theta plus cos theta is 3 by root 5. 3 by root 5 which is option A. Right? That's our answer. So as you have observed, this is one of the possible ways of getting the required answer. But some of you may argue, right? The argument here is that hypotenuse, fine, can be taken as root 5. But how do we decide that among the base and the perpendicular, which is 1 and which is 2? For example, in this right angle triangle, we have considered the base as 1 and the perpendicular as 2. But if we consider a triangle where the base is 2 and the perpendicular is 1, with hypotenuse being root 5. Even in this case, the Pythagoras theorem is satisfied. But what happens? The given equation would not be satisfied. Right? If you take this as a right angle triangle, what would be secant theta? Secant theta will be root 5 by 2. And what is tan theta? 1 by 2. So secant theta plus tan theta will be root 5 by 2 plus 1 by 2, which is root 5 plus 1 by 2. Hence, the given equation is not satisfied. So if at all you try with this right angle triangle, you have to, you know, change it and find out, follow this one, right? Where the hypotenuse is root 5, the base is 1 and the perpendicular is 2. So it's all about writing the values in such a way that the given equation is balanced. And that is the reason, though this method looks to be easy, it may get complicated sometimes, right? If you're not wise enough in putting these values, then you may end up wasting a lot of time. So I would like to clearly mention that, follow this procedure only if you're confident enough of your calculation and your uh, right angle triangle sides that you've taken. Otherwise, you can simply go ahead with the regular procedure and arrive at the required answer. I'm sure even this can be made a little simpler by cutting down a few steps, which is based on your understanding. So only if you are confident enough of the second method here, go ahead with this. Otherwise, follow the regular method. And if you really want to try 
such methods in the exam you have to make sure that you practice a lot on such types of questions because the more you practice the easier it gets and the fair are the chances that you will get the best idea at the right time so keep practicing and make sure that you answer these questions in a smart way